I start off with a synopsis. I started off with a synopsis a couple times. I always ended up tearing it up and throwing it away. So now I just start off with a great idea that really inspires me, that just makes me excited. That, that opening idea has to have an emotional content to it. That's the thing. It has to have something that makes you excited or mad or angry or scared. Um, okay, as an example, here, this, is, this was an idea, and, and this is an idea that you'll probably all have an emotional reaction to. I hope you do. And it came from my reading an article in the Boston Globe. True story. Young woman is found dead in a bathtub. There are empty pill bottles. It's an accidental overdose. The, uh, the coroner comes, says, yeah, she's dead. And everybody says she's dead. So they zip her up into a body bag, and they send her to the morgue. And a couple of hours later, she woke up. It's in my book. That's vanished, right. Um, I read that, and I thought, whoa, you know, how often does this happen? Um, and I think we all probably have the same fear of being mistaken for dead, waking up in a body bag, waking up in a coffin, waking up in a refrigerator. Um, so I thought, you know, I went right to, the, to LexisNexis and began searching for, for mistaken for dead, cases of mistaken for dead. Found way too many of them. It happens a lot. Um, from a young man who spent the night in a morgue refrigerator in Atlanta. Um, and. Um, my, my literary agent uh, said, oh, a Nantucket it used to happen all the time. <laughs> because they had a nursing home and their medical director was deaf. Oh. What? So the nurse would say, this is Jones, looks like she's passed away, can you come and examine her? And so he would put his stethoscope on the chest, wouldn't hear the heartbeat, sent them off to the morgue. <laughs> Three people woke up in the morgue that year. Uh, so they used to call that uh, that nursing that more of the house of rejuvenation. <laughs> um, and there was a man who was lying on the autopsy table uh, in New York City. Doctor was about to cut him open. The dead man woke up. The doctor had a heart attack. And died. <laughs> so you know, you get these stories. You think this is the beginning of a novel. But what you do with it, what you do with it, defines what you are as a writer. You can make that a comedy, you can make that a, a, a tragedy, you can make that a thriller. And I ended up making it a thriller, which became the book Vanish, where uh, Maura is working in the morgue late one night, uh, hears some noise and thinks, what is this? And she opens up a body bag, and the woman who's lying there, her eyes pop open. Now, wouldn't that freak you out, right? Yeah. So anyway, so, so you, you get this idea that freaks you out or does something to you emotionally. And for me, I just start writing, because I want to know what happens next. And I generally try to think of the worst that can happen, and that's what happens. Uh, <laughs> the other thing I try to do is keep conflict in there constantly. So every, every scene I have, there must be some, somebody must be off balance. Something is off balance. Something is not right. Or these two people aren't getting along. Um, and think of it in real life. What are the moments you remember? It's the moments where you have conflict. It's the moments where things don't go right. You don't remember the times that things go right. So if you can have that happen in your book with every scene, that tension is always there. Um, the other thing I do is I don't stop and edit. I just keep on writing. Because if I stop to edit, I will edit that first chapter again and again for the rest of my life. Um, and I don't know what the book is about until I finish the book. And then I know what the story is about. Uh, going back to that story, Vanish, uh, when I wrote the first draft, it was a man in that body bag. And I wrote to, to the halfway point. Um, well, in the story, what happens is Maura sends him off to the emergency room, right? Um, and he, there he's, he recovers, and he grabs the security guard's gun, and he shoots him, and he takes hostages. So it becomes a hostage crisis. Um, and among the hostages he takes is, is Jane Mazzoli, who's there um, in the books anyway to have her baby. So I get halfway through that story, and I think, now I'm bored. It's a hostage crisis. So what? I don't know what he's doing there. I don't know why he's killing people. I have no idea what, what the solution to this mystery is. And I went on a long drive through Texas, and that was a long drive. Um, and halfway there, through there, I realized that if I made that dead man in a body bag a woman, it became more interesting to me. And that's what I did. But I didn't go back to fix the first half. I just kept on writing as if it had always been a woman in that body bag. So if you read my first drafts, you'd be really confused. Uh, you know, all of a sudden there's a sex change operation here. Uh, but I think that, that the key for me is to just keep on that forward motion. You can always, and this is something that Nora Roberts, the great Nora Roberts, uh, romance author, said once, I can fix a bad page, but I can't fix a blank page. So just get those blank pages filled up. 
And only then, when I finish the first draft, do I know what my story is about. And then it means I'm going to have five, six, seven more rewrites, but at least I've got the story down. Yes? 